Hi everyone, today I thought it would be fun to colour this picture. Um, this is from um, Die Welt under the Lupa Zulander by Rita Berman. And uh, I picked it because it's quite a nice simple um, page. It's in a little bit for you. I'm just going to pop something behind the page so that I don't get any transfer of um, ink or anything from the page behind it. There we go. Okay. Now I've decided that I want to do this um, flower, it looks to me a bit like a cornflower, so I thought I would do it in blue. So I'm actually going to grab my Castle Art, oops, my Castle Art Seascape set. There's a lot of blues and purples in here which I thought might just really work well with, uh, with this particular flower. And there's some pretty greens as well which will sort of work with it. So I'm actually going to start with this um, colour. I can't get it out of the tray. It's always good, isn't it? Good start. Um, an ultramarine violet. It's quite a bluey purple colour. Let's zoom in a little more. Let's zoom in to, so you can see the whole flower quite closely. Oh, it's looking quite fur. Hang on. Move, move into the centre. It'll be a little more in focus, I think, for you. And what I'm going to do is start with the central part of each petal. Now there's a little um, sort of something going on in the centre here with seeds and things which we'll address later. So I'm just going to work around that at the minute like that. And basically I can help myself to figure out what's going on in the centre here with this start to my colouring. My stomach's rumbling. I don't know why. It's uh, it's not even 10 o'clock yet. Oh gosh, there it goes again. <laughs> I hope you can't hear it. I had a big breakfast. I, well, I had my normal breakfast. I like to have um, a banana and some grapes chopped into a bowl with uh, some cocoa powder and uh, we often try to have unroasted cocoa like cacao and me and my son like it, but it depends what we can get. Um, and we have... Um, I'm trying to work out if that's a bit of petal or not. I think I'm going to say no, but it ends there. And um, I had some oat milk on it and uh, had um, some jumbo oats and some spelt flakes on top stirred it all up delicious but uh, i try and get two fruits in the morning if i can and it's a good start to the day banana is so good for you for the inulin so i was learning the other day now i'm going to actually use some of this dark color on the petal ends as well so i'm going to go around filling that in well, I talked to you about inulin because I'm sure you're fascinated. You know, apparently it's really good for your um, gut bacteria and uh, therefore good for your digestion. I have a banana every day. There are lots of other foods with inulin as well, like garlic and onions and Jerusalem artichokes, I think. I'm sure. I'm not sure now. I'm doubting myself. But I was only recently sort of learning about it. But there are so many... Um, good things for us in our veggies. I do love my veggies. I didn't used to as a child, crikey. I used to like carrots, carrots and peas, <laughs> that was about it, and tomatoes from my from my grand's greenhouse and then later from my own greenhouse. Well, I say my, my dad's. Um, but uh, no, I wasn't a veggie person. I hated cabbage and things like that. But now I do. I love them cabbages, sprouts and things. I think it's because um, the varieties these days are much um, sweeter than they used to be. Right, I really like this colour, so I'm really pleased that I picked it. But I'm trying to work out what to put with it now in the centre. Um, I was going to do blue, but I'm not sure that the blues I've got are going to work brilliantly well. I might, actually this one might work. This is actually ultramarine light and to go with the ultramarine violet I think it will probably work. So what I'm going to do is try and blend it in. So where I've started to fade, start the blue there and uh, 
bring the colour down the petal really. Mm, I think we can blend that together in a minute with something else and it will work but we'll see if it doesn't work at the moment it doesn't look like it's oh now I'm going I've just realized that I've done something I don't know if it's, that isn't even a petal that bit Hang on. is it no I think that's a gap in there yeah that's not a petal oh I've done it wrong I'm so sorry if you're following along and you've done it wrong um, hmm. I think we're gonna have to I'm gonna have to make it into a petal or else it's gonna because it doesn't erase so I'm gonna put that ultramarine back put some there and then put the ultramarine light on it like that We'll just have to make it look like a petal that's a bit behind the others. Because I've messed it up. I'm so sorry if you were colouring along and now you've messed it up. I'm sorry. Another way to get around that is to go over it with a black pen. <laughs> it's a great cheat. I've just got a new black Posca pen, fairly recently actually. And uh, if you do the whole background in black. But the problem is, because this colour is so dark, there's some blue. You might have to outline your um, plant in um, in white for it to show up. So again here I've gone over there and that isn't really a bit of petal but now it's got to be. Never mind. Hopefully you're not too upset. I'm sorry. But uh, anyway. Let's finish. Let's move on. Forget about that. So these two colours I'm feeling aren't melding together. Melding? Melding together that well. So what I'm going to do after I've done white my nose, sorry, is grab this one. This is the Cerulean Blue Middle and I'm going to use it over the whole petal and hope to just bring it all together colour sort of blending it all and sort of smushing and mixing. Mm. I'm happy with that. I'm feeling hungry now talking about my breakfast and what I had. I was too busy talking to you about inulin to actually think about what I was supposed to be colouring. I'm sorry. You haven't really come for a nutrition lesson, have you? But I do take what I eat really seriously. Um, I'm just really interested in um, looking after ourselves and things, you know, making sure that we're healthy. I think because I've got certain illnesses that run in my family, I think everybody does really, that uh, I want to protect myself against them. So the biggie is uh, type 2 diabetes. My dad is borderline. Um, he did reverse it once, but it's back again. And uh, my mum it has been type 2 for quite some time. She reversed it a little bit for a while too, but uh, came back. The difficulty is that unless you make the lifestyle changes forever, it will come back. And even if you do make the lifestyle changes, you know, maybe it will come anyway. It's not always just diet related and lifestyle related, of course, with the genetic factor in there. Some of my um, second cousins have had tests to see if they're prone to it, but uh, I haven't bothered. I think it's better not to know in the sense that I will behave better and uh, keep my diet under control. If I, I think that would look a lot better if it was white. The other option is to go over it with a white pen, but I don't think it will match the paper, so I think it looks a bit weird. So we're going to move on to the bud. I haven't thought about what I'm doing for the centre yet, so I'm just going to ignore it for a minute. Then going back to my ultramarine violet to do the beginnings of this. What I want to do is the base of each petal 
in this. And I want to do a fairly hard layer at the bottom and then just fade it a little bit up woods. So yes, I try my hardest to keep a healthy weight and eat well, but I actually need to start exercising a bit more really. This is Ultramarine Light. I, uh, I've been, since having had sinusitis, I have been taking it easy a bit and not going out so much. But uh, I think I need to start just gently doing something. But uh, I don't know if it helped me, but I am all better, which is nice. Got my energy back. And so that's good. If I was on them antibiotics, it probably helped me too. So another reason why I have to be careful with my eating now. I'm going to go back with the ultramarine violet to do the top, the edge of this top bit. I don't know why I didn't do it. Yes, yeah, so I need to make sure I'm having plenty of fruit and veg and things to get to feed those bacteria that have been killed by the by the ultramarine night by the antibiotic. Because of course. Oh, it's going out of focus, I'm sorry. The problem with the um, antibiotics is they kill all bacteria. They don't discriminate between good and bad. So I've got to the cerulean blue middle. This time I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I'm just going to do the tip. I realise it doesn't sort of match what we've done over there, but I don't think it matters. Things can look quite different when they're in bud compared to when they're flowering. But we do need to think about the centre. Hmm. Now the centre I would quite like to actually do in yellow. Yeah, I know, yellow. Um, we have a cadmium yellow here. Now the yellows in the um, in these in the castle art, I feel, aren't massively vibrant, so I'm going to put on lots of layers around the outside, leave the centre white, and it makes it look more rounded, and I'm going to layer it quite hard on these bits. Now, at the end of each of these bits, there's a circle, and it's too small for me to do in a pencil. So I'm going to dot it in a pen. Um, I think I'm going to use this one. Oops. This is a Derwent paint pen. It needs a good shake. It's very similar to a Posca. But this is a pale colour. As you'll see, this is called Lemon Yellow. And that's not shaking up enough. Um, just trying it on a scrap of paper. No, it needs a lot more shaking than a Posca pen. It's actually, um, I did say in another video, it was Colour with Claire who was shaking and shaking and shaking the pen and it made me realise that I needed to shake mine a bit more. I think that might just about do it. Uh, I found it just seemed really watery and dull and it was just because I wasn't shaking it enough. Whoops. I uh, can't see where that one used to go, so I should just guess. There we go. And I'm thinking I'm just going to put a few dots around here. Hopefully that will disguise our mistake there a little bit more as well. There we go. Okay, so now we have the stem to do. Now we could use a greeny blue because we've used a lot of blue, which I always think is quite nice. And of course, as we've got this seascape set, that is what we have got a lot of. So our darkest green is the Viridian, which I'm going to be using to do all the parts that I want a little bit darker. So where we start at the base of the flower here and here. And then where anything touches,
with a longer leaf like that one I thought I would go a little bit further along with the darker colour like that okay I might do a bit more of that in a bit and um, we have um, the fallow green oops this doesn't want to be picked up there we go oops fallow green which I'm now going to use so just to extend those areas I want to try and make it lighter towards the sort of further away from the viridian we go so just putting more layers nearer to the viridian here and then less as we go towards the tip we can always add a lighter colour green if we think it's necessary Let's see how it looks doing it quite lightly at this point here layering up here lighter here Now there are areas that I want to really stand out as a little bit darker and I didn't think I had layered up my Viridian enough. So I'm going to come back in with the Viridian just to go over those areas a little bit. Because I think it's, it's a little bit crowded in the centre here. It's nice to be able to see quite what's going on. I'm not going to do any more on the bottom of that one and then it will stand out a little more. The same here, I do a bit here, but no more on there, or a tad on there. And I'm going to just bring it all together with the mint green. So on these areas where it's a little bit paler, because on some of the leaf ends like this one, it's a little bit too pale for my liking. It will just add some vibrancy and means the colour goes all the way to the tip. Now I've been thinking about what to do with these circles around the plant, oh, um, which you can vaguely see. I will zoom out so you can see a little more of them. Oh, it's very slow. Here we go. Now, I have been wondering whether to do... Um, on, there we go. Um, a different colour and I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do them in pink just because I want them to look a little different so we've only got this alizarin crimson in this set which is quite a dark pink but I think it'll work because we've got quite a dark bluey purple here and I'm going to try I'll show you on a large one first to make it look oops, spherical we're going doing a dark layer around the edge then less as we come into the center like that and the smaller ones I can't do that I just have to fill them in but uh, with the larger ones like this you can do this now you could um, I think these would be nice um, metallic or glittery as well um, so you could do that um, if you wanted, if you, I'm not, I'm not going to show you. It's quite easy to use a, a glitter pen or a metallic pen. Maybe in a, a a pink, maybe a lighter pink, perhaps. I'm not sure, because because some um, pencils are a bit more and pens are a bit more intense. Might uh, might be nice. And you could always add a few extra dots around if you wanted, rather than just sticking to these. Um, few. It's up to you. And the same with the background. I'm not going to add a background to this. I like its simplicity, but you could use a, um, a pale blue pastel. That would be quite nice. Or even a grey would work quite well. Or a mauve. 
maybe. Uh, and so I mean, I don't mean mauve. I mean a pale purple, like a lavender or a lilac. In my head, that's mauve, but obviously in polychromos, mauve is really dark purple. So anyway, there is our flower. So I am all done. Um, I hope um, that was okay for you. Um, thank you so much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>